All right, kids. Uh, so let's talk about the assignment. I've uh, put a cold, you know, pushing snow off the uh, solar array, trying to increase a uh, little electricity production. So uh, Diego had asked about question number four. Uh, and here's the basic idea is that here's this gravel, right? And then you have like this body of water like this. So here's, here, you have to understand the process that allows you to see anything, okay? You only see anything is if light bounces off something and then it reflects back into your eye. So if you're walking along, okay, and you've got that flashlight here, well, if it's hitting that rough surface, then part of that light will reflect back into your eye. If you hit that smooth body of water, then when it's going to hit it, that light's going to bounce off and keep going in that direction. So the reason that if you look at that question is like, you know, water for potholes appear much darker. That's because there's not very much of that that's going to reflect that light back. Without it reflecting back, you're not going to see it. Okay. Uh, he asked, also asked about question number five. So if you look on question number five, so here's this mirror, and you've got a, I'm kind of roughing this out, B, C, and D, and you're the observer, okay? So remember, your angle of incidence equals your angle of reflection. So, and this is what I tried to show you. It's like, if you can't see something in a mirror, it can't see you. So, if I take a line and draw it from the observer to this point, okay, like this, and then back to B, like this, okay, so I can hit the edge, so if I look this way with like a ray, it, it's going to hit this mirror, and it's going to bounce off at a symmetrical angle, so I can see B. The other thing that can happen is that B could see me. So, as one who's driven lots of trucks and pulled lots of trailers, if you're behind a truck that's pulling a trailer, and here's the rule, if, if you look in, if you're pulling around, and you're behind them, and you can't see their mirrors, they can't see you either. Okay, so just be cognizant of that. So like if you're behind a big truck, if you can't see the mirrors, they can't see you. So, and, and trucks, you know, they're very big. They take a long time to slow down. So don't think, oh, this car, this, I'll just whip around this truck. Just be very careful when you're passing big trucks. So don't get tucked into that blind spot. Now, but if you look at A, okay, I can't see A because to see A, the mirror would have to be over here, and it's not, so I can't see A in the mirror. Now, if you look at C, oh, okay, right? So if I look at C and do this, okay, all right, I can see C. Now, with D, here's the problem with D is that D is so far out, I actually didn't draw that far enough over. So D is actually like way over here. So if I try and do that with a line of symmetry, D is outside of that. So the only ones you can see are B and C. I'd like to say I meant to make that rhyme, but I really can't. Okay, uh, so let's talk about Let's talk about number six. Diego didn't ask about number six, but let's talk about number six. So here's your setup on number six. So this is like five centimeters, and this is like 10 centimeters, and you're gonna go like this, and like that. And these two angles are going to be the same. Okay? So here's your angle of incidence, there's an angle of reflection. So here's the deal. 
So if you look at this in terms of what you're trying to find, okay, your ultimate question on, on this problem is if you look at this diagram, you're trying to figure out uh, how far below the top edge does the ray strike the mirror. So you're trying to find this distance. Okay, that's, that's the distance that you're trying to find. So here's the deal. So if you look at this in terms of tangents, all right? So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So these two angles, because they're the same, that means the ratio of their opposites over their adjacents are the same. So if you look at this in terms of being, okay, I'm going to let this be x1, and I'm going to let this be x2. So then if you look at this in terms of opposite over adjacent, so this one up here is going to be x1 over 10, equals the tangent of theta. So then over here, this one is going to be, this one down here is going to be x2 over 15. So x1 over 10 is going to equal x2 over 15. Now, because they're the same tangent, right? They're the same ratio. But here's the problem. You have two variables and one equation, so you can't solve it. But you also know that x1 plus x2 has to add up to 10 centimeters, because that whole length is 10 centimeters. So you got x1 and x2, right? So x1 plus x2 have to add up to 10 centimeters. So what you can do is do a little substitution. So if you solve for x1, you get 10 minus, oh, I screwed that up. 10 minus x2, so you can put that in here. So then you've got 10 minus x2 over 10 equals x2 over 15. Then you can solve for x1. And then you know that uh, once you get x1, then you can add that to the 5 centimeters. So your answer to number 6 should be around 10 centimeters. Okay, it's a little bit less than that, but it's around that value. Okay, on number seven, so you're standing here, here's my famous stick person, right? And here's the mirror, and you're 200 centimeters away. And what they're asking for on that one is, uh, how, far does, how, how far is it from your eyes to the image of your toes? So again, if you look at this in terms of what you're going to see, so the light from your toes has to bounce off and then come up here so that you can see it. So if you extrapolate that out, this is what we call a virtual image, okay? It looks like your toes are on the other side of the mirror, but in reality they're not. So this is basically a trig problem. So you're 165 centimeters tall, okay, right? So this is going to be 200 centimeters, and assuming that it's a flat mirror, that's also going to be 200 centimeters. So this is 165, this is a total of 400, you're just trying to find that hypotenuse. So that answer to number seven should be around four meters. Okay. Uh, now, on number nine, let's talk about number nine, even though Diego didn't ask for it, let's, let's go with that. So here's the boat, okay? Here's the scuba diver, right? And the whole key to this on number nine in terms of that information, so he sees the sun 50 degrees above the horizon. So he's down here, right? So he's going to see this as a 50 degree angle. Now what you have to realize is that when that light goes out of the water and it's going to come into a less optically dense medium, so it's going to get bent like this. So that light's going to come like this. Now remember, he's seeing this light coming here like this 
hit the water, and then slow down. Because that's, he's seeing it. So it's hitting here, boom, slows down, boom. Now, if he was shining a laser out at the sun, it would go like this, then it would hit, and then it would speed up like this. Now, with Snell's Law, you have to remember that these angles are based upon the normal, okay, with that line. So if this is a 50 degree angle, you actually have to work off this angle right there. So anyway, uh, your answer to number nine should be around 30, just, it's just Snell's Law, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Uh, on, uh, Let me see, I think that's it. Yeah, the rest of them are pretty straightforward. Your answer to number 10 is around 1.4 for that index of refraction. And uh, anyway, so I'll do some demos with optics and I'll try and get that filmed. So there we go. Okay. So, again, I'm going to try and do this without you actually being here, which is going to be tough to do. So, I sent out uh, this set of notes. Uh, let me pull those up. No, i got to use this. Never mind. i got to use this while I'm here. Okay, this will make sense once you see the notes. So, when you talk about lenses and mirrors, okay, and we're going to have two of each. We're going to have two converging lenses. Excuse me, we're going to have two converging situations. One where you have a converging mirror, and one where you have a converging lens. And then we're going to have a diverging lens and a diverging mirror. Okay? So we're going to have two of each. A diverging lens and a converging lens, a diverging mirror and a converging mirror. So just like the name implies. If something is converging, that means that it brings things together. If something's diverging, it makes things go apart. So what this is showing, and hopefully you all can see this, I tried to make it as big as I could. So this is what's called a converging lens. So what happens here, and this is what's called a ray diagram, and this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to send out as the PDF file. So when you talk about terminology. There's three things that you have to worry about. You have to worry about your focal length. Okay, now, the first thing I want to get out of your minds is the idea that focal length means that's where the object is in focus, okay? That's not it, okay? That is not it, okay? So get out of your minds that the focal length is where it's in focus. It's not. The focal length is just basically where these light where these rays will go through. So typically you have three primary rays. So when you, and this is like the classic one where you have a converging lens. This is how your eyeball works. Okay? So I want to point out some things. Here's the focal length, okay? And that's going to be a property of the mirror of the of the mirror or the lens. You have this, which is the image, so this is your image distance, so this is how far away, excuse me, the object distance. This is how far away the object is from the lens, and then you have the image distance, which is what you're going to see. So, focal length, object distance, image distance, okay? Now, what this has is three primary rays. And this is, like I said, this is like the classic example. So one of these comes in, and it's parallel with what's called the optical axis. It hits the lens, boom, bends it, comes down like this. Notice that this goes through this focal point. You have another one that goes straight through the middle, down to here. And then you have another one that goes through the near focal point, hits the lens, and comes over here. So where these points converge, this is where you're going to see the object, okay? So now there's a couple of things, and this will be easier once I show you something back there. 
But this is going to be an inverted image. Now, when you talk about images, there's only two options in terms of images. It's either going to be upright or it's going to be inverted. Okay? So in this situation, you're going to have an inverted image. So this is, you can't see it, but this is like an arrow. So what's happening is that this, what you would see over here is a flipped over image of that arrow. Typically, in classic physics style, this is usually like a candle. But the main thing is you don't want to draw this as just a stick. You want to draw it as like an arrow, a candle, something, so that that way you can tell what's happening. Now, in reality, we draw three rays. In reality, there are infinite number of rays that are happening. We just draw the three to figure out where, what's going to happen with the end of this arrow. In reality, light is bouncing off all of these and forming this. So I don't want you to think, oh, we're only going to form images that make the arrow, the end of the arrow. No, no, no. Infinite number of rays are bouncing off this thing. We just do what's called ray tracing to keep track of this. Now, here's what I want you to see. And this will make sense later on. One of the things that you talk about focal length when you get into this, what's called the thin lens equation. And I'm just going to plant the seed. You'll see how this works later on. If you have a converging lens, okay, or a converging mirror, if you bring things together, focal length is going to be positive. And here's the easiest way to remember that. Is to remember that, you know, if somebody's positive, okay, they tend to bring things together bring people together, they bring ideas together, they make good things happen. If something's divergent, it tends, to, they, it tends to drive people away, it tends to make them scatter, and those tend to be negative people. So on a focal length, on if anything's converging, whether it's a mirror, whether it's a lens, your focal length is going to be a positive value. If it's diverging, whether it's a lens, or a mirror, doesn't make any difference, the focal length is going to be a negative value. Okay? Key thing to remember. So, now we can change this situation. So like, there's a slider down here, so if I change that focal length here, okay? So notice that as I change the focal length, I change where that image is showing up. I also change the size of that image. So depending upon the type of lens and where these focal lengths are, that determines where you're going to see this image and how big it is. So this is going to be dependent upon where you're going to see this is dependent upon the focal length. It also depends upon how far away the object is from the lens. Okay, so this is the classic converging lens, you bring it in, boom, here you go, okay? Now, you can also have a diverging lens, okay? Now, notice here, and this, this is going to be different. This is the hardest one to actually see, okay? Here's the reason why. So, notice that you have your, your lenses again, okay? But now, notice that this is coming in like this. Notice that when the light hits here, as the name implies, it spreads out. It diverges. Now, this is why this is tough to do in terms of actually showing you this. Okay, so here's your object. So this light is coming in here. It's hitting this, and it's bouncing back. But what's happening is that part of this light is going to trace back towards this focal point right here, okay? So, right there. Then you have another one that's coming in like this, and it's going to hit this lens, and it's going to go parallel with this axis. And then you have another one that's going straight through the center. So, with this one, here's the difference. Your image is actually going to be on this side of the lens. So when it was a converging lens, the image appeared on the other side of the lens. So it was on the opposite side of the lens. Now, the other thing, and this will make sense as you go through some of this, 
With this one, the object, what you're going to see, is in the direction that the light is traveling. So the light is traveling in this direction, and that's where you see this. Now, in contrast, with a diverging lens, the light is actually going in this direction, but you're seeing it back over here. So you're seeing it in the opposite direction the light is traveling. And you're going, whoa, 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 Burkham. How can you see something in the opposite direction the light is traveling? What's happening is that the light is going this way, but it's refracting part of that light back in this direction, and that's where you're going to see it right here. So in this situation where you have a diverging lens, your focal length would be a negative value because light's going, because the light is being spread out. So here's the difference between a converging lens and a diverging lens. On a converging lens, light hits, boom, comes together. Your image shows up over here. On a diverging lens, the light goes up, your image shows up on the other side, and it's an upright image. The other thing, on a converging lens, your image is upside down. So on a converging lens, image is inverted, and it's over here. On a diverging lens, the image is here, but it's upright. And this is tough to see, mainly because, it, and you'll see this, and this is something I cannot show you on a camera. This is something I'm just going to have to wait till you all get here. Now, if you look at mirrors. Now, the only mirror they have here is a converging mirror. Now, when you talk about mirrors, and here's the other bit of terminology, this is what's known as a concave mirror. So on a concave mirror, here's the easiest way to remember this. If it's a concave mirror, it's like you're walking into the cave. Okay, so imagine this is like a cave and you walk into it. So this is a concave mirror. Now, what's happening here, and, and, and mirrors get weird because in terms of what you can actually see. So this light comes here, it hits this mirror, right? And then it gets bent and reflected back to this focal point. Then you have another one here, and it's going to hit and it's going to bounce back like this. And then you have another one that goes through the center. Now, with this one, and this is tough to see, okay? And, and I apologize because I can't make this bigger. But what you'll see is that the, this arrow is right here, and it's upright. So with this one, you have a mirror, okay, that's converging. So it's bringing this light together. So this would have a positive focal length because it's bringing this light together. And your image would be right there, and it would be upright. So it's here, boom, comes together. Now, this particular program doesn't have a diverging mirror, but I'll show you what's going to happen with that in the back of the room. Now, Joel uh, sent an email and wanted number eight. So let's talk about number eight. So on number eight, Here's the deal on number eight. So, uh, those are still ringing. So the whole key to this is symmetry. So I think they give you, this is like a 35 degree angle, so that means that's a 35 degree angle. So that means this is like 90, which means that's 55 degrees. They're okay. And then that's going to bounce off here at a 55 degree angle. Okay? So it's a little weird on, on, on how they uh, how they phrase this, but basically if you if you really draw this out, so you got a 35 degree angle here, that's symmetrical with this 35, that makes this a 55, that means that's a 55. That's the main idea that you want to get. And so if you do this and if you draw it actually the scale then you'll see that this is also then a 35 degree angle, so that these two lines are parallel. Okay, Joel, hopefully that clarified that. Okay, I'm going to stop this and we're move to the back of the room.
Okay, kids. Uh, so let's kind of talk about some terminology here. So this is going to one of the things that you're going to do in terms of labs, and you're going to have like uh, two big labs with lenses and two big labs with meters. So this is your light source. Now I won't shine that directly at the camera. So notice that this is showing an upright four. So this would this, and this is a uh, you know, remember. This is a convex lens, okay? So when you look at how this is gonna play out, so this is my image distance. So I've got this like at 10 centimeters and I've got this at 25. So this would be my image distance, which would be 15 centimeters, okay? Because here's the lens, here's my image, okay? That's what's or excuse me, this is my object. This is my object. Sorry, forget that. This is the object. Now, here I've got this screen now. You'll notice if I bring this too close, it gets out of focus. If I bring it too far out, it gets out of focus. So there's a sweet spot right about here where this thing is in focus. So where that is in focus is the image distance. So here's your three distances. I've got a 10 centimeter focal length because that's a property of this lens. I've got an object distance which is how far it is from here to here and then wherever this is in focus is my image distance. So I've got an image distance, object distance, focal length. Okay. Now, you'll notice that this 4 is inverted, okay? So what's happening is that those rays are crossing over each other, and you're producing a 4 that's upside down. Now, you'll also notice that it also flips it about the x-axis, and it flips it about the y-axis. So you're flipping it both ways. So if you look at this 4, okay, All right? So if you look at that 4, and... You compare it to this four, okay? Then you want to look in terms of how that's being flipped over. Now, the other thing you get into terminology, this is what's known as a real image. If something's a real image, I can project it onto a screen, okay? So this is a real image. If something's a virtual image, like what I just showed you, with the, uh, dive, with the uh, diverging lens where that image was on the opposite side of where the, the light was traveling, that would be a virtual image. There's no way that I could project that onto a screen. So you have two broad classifications of images. You have virtual, the ones that can't be projected, and then you have real, which can be projected which can be projected onto a screen. Now, in terms of magnification, so you'll notice that this four here is a lot bigger than the four. So if something has a magnification of one, that means that your, this, the, the object height is the same thing as your image height. If this is bigger than what you started, then what the object is, if your image is bigger, then that has a magnification greater than one. If the image is smaller than what you started, then the magnification has a value of less than one, okay? Now, there's a whole bunch of things that you gotta keep track of, and the only way you can do this is just kind of work through this process. Okay, now you got that. Now I wanna move over to another thing. Okay, so again, hopefully this shows up. All right, so what I've got here is my light source, and this is going to show you like the four different types of, or the two different types of lenses and the two different types of mirrors. So what I have here is a concave mirror. So, and you can see this, how it's hitting these, and then it's reflecting it back, but it's converging 
those rays, okay? So if I tilt this just right, you can see where these rays are being brought together. So this would be a concave, remember here's like the mirror, or mirror, here's the cave, you can walk into it. So concave mirrors bring light together like this, okay? So this would be a concave mirror, it brings light together, this would have a positive focal length. Now, if you have a diverging mirror, okay? Now, notice with this one, notice that this one, this is a convex mirror. So convex mirrors, when they hit, they scatter that light out. So with this one, notice how it's hitting that surface, right? And it's scattering this light out, and it's going away from it. So this would have a negative focal length because it's diverging the light. Okay. Now, this is a concave lens, okay? And if you can see this, it comes in like this, it, like, it's like curved in, okay? Like an hourglass. So what's happening here is that this light is being, as it hits this, it's spread out, okay? So this would be a convex lens. It's diverging, so this would have a negative focal length. And this is why I said it's real hard to see, but the image that you would see would actually form right in here. And I, ca I can't see it, it isn't that good, and it, I don't have the, the optics to pull that off. Now, with this one, and this is the most dramatic one, so this is a convex lens because of the fact that it's bowed out like this, okay? So this one, concave because it's curved in like this. This is convex. Now, this is, what, this is the first one that I showed you up here. So this one is taking those beams of light and it's bringing them together. So this is a converging lens because it's taking this light and it's bringing it together. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some idea. So converging lens, diverging lens. Diverging mirror, converging mirror. Now here's the, here's the dichotomy is that concave mirrors bring light together, but concave lenses diverge the light. Convex lenses bring light together, but convex mirrors scatter the light, okay? So they're like opposites of each other, okay? All right, hopefully that shows up. Okay, so this is what I've sent you all, and there's two pages to this. One where it's blank, and then the other one where that's like my copy where I have everything filled in. So this whole thing is brought to you by two equations in the Sinai equation sheet. And one is the thin lens equation, which is one over psi plus one over so equals one over f. Now, this is your image distance, this is your object distance, this is your focal length. Your object distance is always a positive value, okay? You don't have to worry about that. Your object distance is always positive. What you see is that sometimes your image distance is negative or positive. Sometimes your focal length is positive or negative, and that's what we talked about. So if you have a positive focal length is because the light is being converged either through the lens or from a mirror. If your focal length is negative, your light's being diverged, like for example here. So this is a diverging lens, okay, otherwise known as a concave lens. So you, this would have like a negative focal length. 
if you compare that to this situation where you have a converging lens, you would have a positive focal length. Now, the only thing that annoys me about the equation sheet is that your magnification, what they give it is high over ho, which is equal to psi over so. And they put absolute values. Now, in reality, I don't know why they do this, because functionally, if you can figure out the sign of the magnification, it will tell you if the object is upright or inverted. So this is what always annoys me, why they put absolute values here, because in reality, if you can figure out the sign of the magnification, that will tell you if it's upright or if it's inverted. Not if it's virtual or real, but if it's upright or inverted. Now, so here's the deal. If your magnification is bigger than one, that means your image height is bigger than your object height. So in other words, you're seeing something bigger than the object is that you're actually looking at. Or if your image distance is greater than your object distance. So these are equalities here. Okay. So typically what you're going to try and solve for is the image distance. So typically what you're going to do is you're going to solve for psi. So that's going to be 1 over psi equals 1 over so minus minus. I screwed that whole thing up. 1 over f minus 1 over so. This is all. <coughs> this will always be a positive value. This could be positive or negative. So I've sent you, and typically what I do is I spend like an hour working through this. But in the name of time, and because I'm going to go ahead and send, I'm going to give this to you as well. So what I did is I basically went through and worked through all of these different scenarios. So I started with this one. So this is like the classic example. So if you look at this, my object height, that's two centimeters. My image height is also going to be two centimeters. My focal length is going to be positive because of the fact that it's bringing this light together. My image distance is going to be positive. If you go through the math, and that's what I did here, okay? So if I, what I did here is that I found my value of my image distance. So I took 1 over my focal length, which is 20. So here's my focal length. That's 20. I've got an object distance, which is going to be 40, because it's 40 centimeters away. So that's, here's my object distance. So I took 1 over 20 minus 1 over 40 equals 1 over 0 0.025. I took the inverse of that, and that's how I got an image distance of 40 centimeters. So in this situation, the object is here. The image is going to be here. Here's my three primary arrays. So, the best thing that you can do is just work through these. Now, on your assignment, I'm going to expect you to draw ray diagrams like this. Listen to me. You want a sharp pencil? You want to draw this big? Listen to me. You label the object distance. You label the focal point. You label the image distance. I am not going to guess what you did. Now. In the spirit of this assignment, you actually want to draw this out and then measure it, measure it to get the values, okay? On some of those, you can just use the thin lens equation. So, depending upon the situation, you want to draw these. So, I've given you all four of these. I've given you the two situations involving convex lenses. I've given you the one situation involving a concave lens. Now, when you get to concave mirrors, there's actually two situations here. One where you create an inverted image that's on the same side as the mirror. One where you create an upright image that's virtual on the other side of the mirror. Okay. So this is unique because you can get two different images. One where it's upside down and the other one where it's right side up. And again, once I actually give you some mirrors and you can play with it, you'll see how this works.
Now, when you have a diverging mirror, the only thing that you can do is make an image on the other side, okay? That's always upright and it's always smaller. This is why your side view mirrors on your car, these are convex mirrors. So when you're looking at it, you always see an image in your rear view mirror that's upright, but it's smaller. This is why they put warnings on your side view mirror that says warning objects in mirror, in mirror are closer than it appears. Because you look and you see a small image and you think, oh, it's a long way away. It's really not. It looks small, so you get the impression that it's a long way away. In reality, it's very close. Okay. So, I'm going to give you an assignment. It isn't due until Thursday. We're going to spend a lot of time working on it in class on Thursday. And I'm going to plant the seed now. Ideally, with these two labs, Thursday and Friday, if you can come in, like on test days, if, even if you're at home, if you can come in on those two days, to really, because you really need to see these labs. So, if at all possible, you don't have to, I can give you the data, but it would really behoove you if I could get all of you together for those two days. Not mandatory, but it would make life simpler. Okay, I'm done.